This is a deep fake. It can allow me to look like Tom Cruise or Chris Hemsworth or Nick Cage. These examples are pretty lousy, but check out what Hollywood is doing with this kind of tech. The past year, we've seen an explosion of easily available AI tools. It could be used to replace your favorite actors, both alive and dead. Believe it or not, that's most definitely not Tom Cruise. I love it. Confusing people about what's real and what's not. Some are even agreeing to this. Very life like, and it's a little spooky. I'm not sure if this is a bad thing or something that could be really cool and interesting. And the stakes are pretty huge. If this becomes more popular, it could change everything. So today we're gonna try to figure out what this is all about and whether or not this is a good or bad thing. We'll explore how deep fakes and AI in general are starting to change Hollywood. And then I'm gonna show you where this could all go by making my own AI movie. It'll make sense soon, don't worry. But first, what is a deep fake anyways? You've definitely seen them before, but how does it work? Deep fakes use a version of artificial intelligence that's known as deep learning. This is a type of AI that teaches a computer how to process data in a way that a human might. So in the case of our deep fakes, it allows the computer to predict and analyze what an image might look like on someone's face. Now to explain the next step, I'm gonna use a specific example. Okay, so let's say the goal is to put Keanu Reeves face onto mine. We first need a huge set of videos or images from our subject, which in the case of Keanu will be pretty easy. This is why you see more deep fakes of Tom Cruise than a random YouTuber, for example. From the dozens of movies to hours of interviews and thousands of paparazzi photos, there's just a lot more content. Then we're gonna feed all these images into a deep learning algorithm. The algorithm then superimposes and attempts to match the images onto my face but this doesn't happen instantly. As you run the algorithm, the deepfake will look better and better. This was something that I made in about five minutes, also known as a cheap fake. And this is something that can be made if you let the algorithm run for days or maybe even weeks. The second one is a lot more accurate to what Hollywood is going to be using these deepfakes for. So let's take a look at that. It's no secret that deepfakes can be used for all sorts of terrible things, especially outside of Hollywood. But some of it can actually be pretty cool, interesting, and really useful. So let's explore the latter for now. One of the most practical cases for using a deepfake is to change the language you're speaking. Now we can use deepfakes to change the way an actor's face and lips move. David Beckham has been using it in commercials. Malaria isn't just any disease. And the movie Fall used deepfakes to not only change languages, but to also completely alter what's being said in English. The movie only had a $3 million budget, but it also had a ton of F-bombs. Now we're stuck on this stupid tower in the middle of nowhere. This changed the rating of the movie from PG-13 to the less desirable R rating. In the movie industry, this means a lot less money. So instead of doing reshoots, which they couldn't afford, they decided to use deep fakes, which looked like this. Now we're stuck on this stupid tower in the middle of nowhere. Stuck on this stupid freaking tower in the middle of freaking nowhere. That's kind of as good as deep fakes get in this case. As I was researching this story, I found something particularly creepy. During the actor strike that happened in late 2023, AI researchers, production companies, and even Meta were hiring actors and scanning them to train their own deepfake algorithms. The Meta project in particular, they say, was just being used for research, but something like this can become very dangerous very quickly. Imagine a company having access to thousands of actors' faces that they can now use for anything. You give your face, expressions, and mannerisms to a company, and now they can use it for whatever they want. And some actors are agreeing to this. Bruce Willis had a digital twin made for a Russian commercial, and the results were pretty convincing. Mississippi. Mississippi. But I'm sure we don't need to worry about any of this getting out of hand, right? Uh, Right, right guys? Okay, I want you to take a look at this clip here. It's from a Disney Plus movie that was released in 2023 called Prom Pact. Don't see it yet? Take another look. What you're seeing here is a row full of totally fake AI-generated background actors. 
Now, I should note that these CGI characters are based off of scanned in actors, and this technique has been used for decades in filmmaking. But it's rare that you see them up this close, and people notice this one more than usual. So, why? For nearly four months, there was a Hollywood actor strike going on, and AI was one of the biggest issues that was being talked about. Actors were worried that studios were suddenly going to replace background actors with deep fakes or digital doubles. So the new SAG agreement wanted to stop this, and they've come to a new contract that has ended the strikes. So this sounds like things should be fine for the actors, right? Case closed. Well, actually, it's a bit more complicated than that. Let's take a look at the summary of the latest agreement. It states that digital actors are technically okay, but only if the studios get consent from the actors. The actors would also get paid the days their digital doubles are used, as well as residuals afterwards. These rules also apply to dead actors, completely synthetic performers, and if facial features resemble an actor's likeness. They all need to be given consent, and they all need to be paid. So this sounds like a pretty good deal for the actors. Actors then. But Justine Bateman, who is an AI advisor on the SAG negotiations, seems to think otherwise. She fears that there are tons of loopholes that studios could exploit, like the fact that digital doubles can be used without consent under certain conditions, like if the work is a docudrama, satire, or historical. And the classifications on this content can be pretty loose and vague, which can allow studios to use digital doubles even more. If this takes off, it can be incredibly weird and dangerous. Acting jobs are already limited enough, and if studios use these digital doubles more, it means less jobs for actors. And you might be thinking to yourself, it's just background actors, who cares? But what if the next Robert Downey Jr. is a background actor working today? They get discouraged because they're getting less work, and then we never get to see what they could have become. Now, Justine isn't saying that these new rules will mean studios will start making all our movies and TV shows with AI, but it's the start of what could potentially be a slippery slope. Where could something like this end up? Let me show you a quick thought experiment of an AI movie that I whipped up during the video. The year is 2065 and you're on your favorite streaming platform. You look around for 45 minutes and can't find anything to watch. You have an idea for what you want, but you just can't find it. So you pull up the streamer's AI chatbot and type a prompt. I want to see a movie kind of like John Wick, but starring Tom Holland, with the vibes of Star Wars directed by Quentin Tarantino. And then, instead of the AI recommending you a movie, it might just make one, and maybe you'll get something like this. Okay, maybe these examples are a little bit extreme, but regardless of how it's implemented, AI is going to be found in our entertainment. The creator from last year almost used an AI-generated score in the style of Hans Zimmer, and the latest Indiana Jones used some pretty intense examples of de-aging that used AI to analyze Harrison Ford's face from the other movies. Whether it's studios using it to help write scripts, deepfaked actors, or movies entirely made by AI, this technology is coming whether we like it or not. But it's probably not as dire as some people are making it out to be. After all, we just have to simply ask the question, who wants movies and TV shows made by AI? I know I don't. Movies and television are at its best when it's a bunch of creative people all working together to make something that has something to say. And I just don't think that's something that AI can do now or will ever really be able to do.